chatting away quite happily to Fred and Sean's come in. I can't remember his call sign, but uh, he's up on Ivan O Beak and I thought I'd do a bit of recording. Roger there, uh, Fred. Yep, I know you uh, from your videos and things. In fact, I was watching, I was watching that latest one about the. Um, Just looking at the meter. And you are five by seven. Yeah, you are signal wise. You are just the same as Steve. You're um, five and seven, five and seven to me on the uh, on static mobile. By the way, up on the Ivan Home Beacon uh, QSL. I've got the uh, Serio Megawatt 4000. I, I, I don't know how many years I've had it, but it served me well so far, mate. In actual fact, uh, Fred and Sean, I've been thinking of maybe trying something else. It would just be something to video, you know, like a review of a new antenna. So uh, I'll put that to you, Fred. Roger that. Well, I'll pass that one over to Sean there. So, Sean, uh, you know, we'll ask how long have you been running the 5000 and would you recommend it? Steve, over. Yeah, Roger, um, for, um, I, I've just switched the, um, the the little burner off there, so I'm using 15 watts. Just, just before I answer that, am I still getting out to you, okay? Yeah, Roger, Sean, yeah, your signal uh, has dropped down quite a bit. Um, yeah, we're down to sort of the S1 and about sort of like Radio 4, yeah, so it's quite a noticeable drop, but uh, I can hear you, Sean, over. Oh, that's okay, I'll switch it back on again then in that case. Um, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, when you're talking antennas, yeah, I'd certainly, uh, <laughs> I don't think, I know someone that's got, someone else has got a 4,000, and to be quite honest, I don't think there's a massive amount of difference between the 4,000 and the 5,000, apart from, obviously, the 5,000 takes more wattage, you know, I mean, who the hell's going to run 5,000 watts in this country, I don't know, but, and you'd have to beef everything else up, but it's... It does mean that the coil in the uh, base of the antenna is slightly thicker than the uh, 4,000 megawatt. But I tell you an antenna that I have purchased recently, and that's the President Texas. Um, that was about 60 pounds off uh, from Nevada, I think. And uh, my God, that is one hell of a mobile antenna. It's about eight foot tall. Really, you need a triple mag mount for it if you want to be driving with it on the roof. But it swarred in one, one to zero straight out of the box, took it out of the packet, fitted it to the mag mount, and I didn't have to adjust the antenna. It was in two, two parts, put the two parts together. Did not have to uh, adjust the antenna at all, and it, it was basically swarred one to zero. The needle hardly moved. And when I was running some power through it, I'm talking 200 watts, that would go up to 1.1 there. Um, uh, uh, back to you, uh, Fred or Steve. Go ahead, Fred. It's, uh, back to Steve. This is the mobile king. So, uh, Steve, yeah, what do you think of that? Is uh, President Texas? Have you heard of that one? Be honest with you, Fred. No, I haven't, mate. It sounds very much like a sl very slightly shortened quarter wave. Uh, you know, being in two bits. I've used a quarter wave. Uh, done a, a very quick sort of comparison between that and this, and there weren't really enough di difference to sort of worry about it, if you know what I mean. But uh, have you got it with you, Sean, or is it sort of you left it at home, mate? Over. I'm not using it today. Um, I'm using the Serio 5000 today. I haven't got it with me, but um, it is, yeah, like you say, at home. Uh, I usually, uh, I like to sort of um, switch between the, the antennas I've got, but um, 
yeah, yeah. There isn't a massive amount of difference when you're talking, you know, transmit and receive. Although someone uh, with a bit of a controlled experiment, I was talking to someone on the, uh, the Wendover Woods, and I was on Brill Hill, and he said the difference between the 5,000 and the Texas, when I was running the Texas, he said it went up a couple of, um, you know, S numbers, as it were. I think I was in stopping him instead of giving him um, 10 over the 9 then. But um, it's the, the thing that I really like about it, Steve, is, is the fact that it swathes in straight out the box. It's like it's, you know, it's designed for CB radio. That's where, that's exactly what it's aimed at. And um, yeah, and I always get good reports um, from other mobiles with it. You know, even when I'm on the Sunday DX, I mean, getting up north, getting out to uh, Bales, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, when you're talking, I don't know. You know, it's not like it's a, a massive difference in the distance I'm getting out on it and receiving. Though, uh, back to you, Steve. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure, yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll give one a go. I mean, I, you know, I still stand by what I say. Bigger is better, you know. You can't, you can't sort of beat uh, a big antenna with a small one. Well, I've never come across that anyway. And yeah, it sounds all good, mate. So is there any loading coil on it at all, uh, Sean, over? Roger on that, Steve. There is a loading coil, uh, but it's base loaded, and it will take uh, it'll take up to 1,800 watts. Uh, but I mean, there. And the good thing, another good thing about it, there are instructions uh, advising you on uh, upgrades regarding your your coax and. Um, or what the bloody hell is it called? The bit that you obviously connect to your back mount. You know, it will say if you're going up in wattage, you know, you want to upgrade, etc., etc. Um, uh, Steve, back to you, mate. Yeah, I might well look into that one. But uh, I'll tell you what the problem I found with a quarter wave that I bought. I mean, they're only like 16 quid, aren't they? Or under 20, let's say. The uh, problem I found was, I went up the downs one day, stuck the antenna on, you know, blah, blah, using it, it was all good. But when I moved across the car park, I mean, I've got like the big Serio Magman, I could hear the Magman starting to rock. So I thought, what am I doing, you know, for the extra little bit, I'm now looking at, like you say, getting like a triple mag, mag mount and all the rest of it. So. A friend of mine needed an antenna for at home, and I said, "Well, this will do, yeah, you know." And uh, we'd done a deal, and I got rid of it. But yeah, maybe one day, mate. Out of curiosity, Sean, how much was it? Yeah, Roger, on that, Steve. It was uh, just off the top of my head, um, rounding it up a little bit, sixty pounds, sixty pounds, and that was from the Marda. That's just for the whip. Uh, yep, yeah, that's right. That was just for the just for the actual um, antenna. Um, I had to buy. I bought the mag mount separate. That was oh god, triple mag mount. I've got that off of eBay. I think I got that for about three thirty five quid. But um, you know, I mean, I'm not made of money. But when I've got it, I just think sod it. You know, I, I'll I'll throw the money at it. You know, that's what I want. Let's get it and see what it does. Uh, back to you, Steve. Yeah, I'm not sure, Sean, if we've got a brake station. Yeah, I'm in the same mind. I mean, this, uh, uh, the megawatt that I've got, I couldn't afford to buy it at first. Uh, I fell short by quite a bit, and I ended up walking out the shop with an ML145, which was okay. And then I thought, well, no, I wish I'd have held off and gone straight for what I want. So what I did, I bought the whip one week, uh, and then a few weeks later, I bought the mag mount. So it ended up costing me about 80 odd quid. But like you say, if you're gonna do something, do, you know, have what you want. But uh, sorry, Fred, we're all sort of waffling away here. Uh, but Sean, can you just put a call out, see if there's someone trying to get in, mate? That's uh, Steve, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying there, you know, otherwise it's just bothering you, you know, you're wondering what the bigger the bigger version's going to be like. Yeah, Roger, was there a QSK on the side, if, if there was, uh, go ahead there, Breaker. <laughs> Uh, 
26 Delta X-ray 59 on the, I think you said the Kent coast there, right? Okay, well, this end, you've got, um, you've got Charlie Tango, I'm a Charlie Tango 1873, personal Sean, and um, I'm up near Dunstable, a place called um, Ivanhoe Beacon. We've also got... Um, and I always forget is I always forget the call sign. We've got uh, Steve up here. He's um, I'll, I'll get him to I'll get him to confirm his, his call sign. And we've also got Fred Fred in the shed sixteen sixty four. And I think Steve is three zero one eight. But um, that's probably wrong. I'll get him to I'll get him to confirm that. Okay then. Um, what I'll do is I will pass you over to the chairman Steve and. Um, Get him to give you a shout. All right then, Steve. Uh, do you want to give two six uh, Delta X-ray five nine down in uh, Kent uh, a shout there, mate? And uh, obviously confirm your call sign because I've I've got a memory like a sieve. Yeah, okay. Cheers, Sean. Uh, okay, well I'll give it a sh the shot, but I'm not sure it hear me. I think it was Delta X-ray five nine. Uh, this is Charlie Tango three one eight mobile. Name Steve and. Uh, where am I at the moment? I'm just near the Luton Junction on the M1, Roger. Stellar X-ray five nine. Uh, you're getting, uh, you're picking Steve up there, Charlie. He's Charlie Tango three one eight uh, QSL. Okay, Steve, he said he got you uh, initially, but then you faded out. But um, I don't know whether you're getting him, but if you want, uh, he was wondering if you wanted to give him another quick go there, QSL. Okay, I'm sort of hearing bits. You know what it's like when you're actually uh, moving, Sean. But yeah, the guy on the south coast, the DX59, I think. This is Charlie Tango 318 Mobile for you. Sean, I know he's there, mate, but I'm getting interference off these overhead gantries. Can you sort of relay for us, mate? Yeah, no problem there, Steve. And, uh, of course, we haven't forgotten about you there, Fred. Um, yeah, um, uh, the, the Kent uh, Coast Station there, the 26 uh, Delta X-ray 59, yeah. Um, Steve, he's struggling on you, mate. He's really struggling on you for the two-way. But, um, yeah, you are correct. He is the man that makes the videos. Um, you know, if you put um, CB radio into YouTube, is uh, is the, uh, I think it's the first video on the um, drop-down menu there. Uh, yep, that's the very man himself. So uh, you've um, you've made uh, you've made the you, you've 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 made the queue so with him there, um, uh, the Kent station. What's the personal, by the way? Andy, the personal this way is short. Um, I'm just going to, we've got another station on here. We've got the 1664 station. Come um, on, Fred, get in there. Uh, Fred, are you, are you getting this um, uh, station uh, down on the, um, the Kent coast there, QSL? Um, yep, barely short. Sure. I've, I've got uh, sort of something uh, in the back of the box there. Unfortunately, not uh, able to really sort of make out his uh, sort of modulation. I'll give him a shout. So, 26 Delta X-ray 59. 26 Delta X-ray 59. This is Charlie Tango, 1664 St Albans, QSL. I'm assuming. 
Germany's home base. Diz, are uh, you struggling on you? Uh, Come on, Fred. Shed? Give it so he's large, struggling mate. on you a little bit there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's struggling on you too regarding making the, the, the two-way there, unfortunately. But, yeah, you know, you have um, you have technically made a QSO with two, uh, two of the YouTube CB big hitters there, uh, QSL. Sorry, Andy, I just can't hear you, mate. Yeah, QSL, no problem there, mate. Uh, me, a group making the contact with you there. So I'll say uh, 73 51 is to you, and what I'll do is I'll hand the key back to um, the chairman there. Um, uh, Charlie Tango 318, uh, Mr. Steve. Yeah, Sean, can you quickly ask him where his nearest town is, the guy down near the coast? Yeah, Roger, no problem. OK, um, Andy, 26 uh, Delta X-ray 59. Um, Steve would like to know what, what the nearest town is down there on the uh, south coast, QSL. QSL, thanks for the information there, Andy. Right, OK, um, Steve. Uh, Andy said he's about two miles, two miles from the town of Margate, uh, QSL. Well, tell him he's doing very well. I mean, he is in there, and I am videoing. Uh, maybe you want to let uh, Andy know that I'm videoing, and he can hear how well he, or he's coming through or not, you know, but uh, that's a hell of a long way. Uh, from a mobile, and I take it he's on a hill or something, is he, Sean? Over? Yeah, Roger on that, Steve. I'll uh, relay that information. Right, OK, Andy, if you're still there. Yeah, Steve thanks, said Sean. he's videoing at the moment, so you're going to be in one of his videos uh, just uh, just to see how well you're coming across. And he says you're making one hell of a journey there from Margate. You're doing really well, because obviously uh, Steve's mobile, mobile, and Fred's in the shed there. Um, and I'm up, I'm 804 and 800 feet above sea level up on top of the uh, Ivanhoe Beacon. Um, so, uh, yeah, you're doing, yeah, you're doing a great job. Hang on just a second, I think, um, yeah, what was I was going to say, I think there was uh, one more question. Uh, Steve, what was, uh, what was the other thing you wanted to say? Just, just, um, just stand by a minute, Andy. What was the other thing you said, Steve? Uh, it was just really to let Andy know that I was uh, videoing and uh, obviously nice sort of uh, hearing him out there and it was just really the town so uh, yeah Margate that uh, I'm surprised he even knows that I'm on the same frequency to be honest so yeah that sort of like weren't really a proper contact uh, I, I knew he was there and uh, yeah, he's doing really well, mate. Yeah, okay, Steve, no worries. All right, then, Andy. Yep. Uh, yeah, just to uh, just uh, repeat that, Steve says. Uh, yep. Uh, he, he knew you were a Margate. He could he could hear you. Technically, you were making the the two way there. And um, yep, says it's a cracking signal. I know what the question was, Andy. Are you on high ground? Are you on high ground, QSL? Right, OK, Steve and Fred, he's actually, he's not on high ground, he's on the beach there. Um, uh, with a, He's using an any tone and um, I've forgotten what the, um, the antenna was there, hold on. Andy, could you just get back to us with the antenna, please? OK, Steve, he's using the Serio Turbo 5000 there, so obviously he's um, a static mobile right on the beach in, uh, in Margate there, Steve, QSL. Yeah, QSL, uh, well, you know, <laughs> he's actually at sea level, so I don't, I don't think you'll hear me at all, I'm going underneath uh, some bridges. And just for the record, Sean, if you are going home via the motorway, don't bother going south, because I actually missed what has happened, but it looks like the motorway's shut, mate, over. Yeah, Roger, cheers for that, Steve, yeah. Um, no, nah, I won't be, uh, won't be touching the OM1. I go back, uh, I go back to Vista, sort of via the um, A41. So we're the A41, I have to sort of negotiate Aylesbury and uh, back that way. But, um, yeah, thanks for the uh, traffic report anyway there, Steve, uh, QSL. 
Yeah, roger, roger, mate. Well, I'm not sure if Fred can still hear me. It's all sort of snarled up here.